It's a gorgeous day here in New York City and I'm here with this gorgeous phone. It's called the HTC U12 Plus by HTC and it's actually their first phone since they sold over a bunch of engineers to Google. So we're taking a look if this phone is worth your money. The HTC U12 Plus has a brick-like build quality. It's quite hefty, it's very large, and the back actually is Gorilla Glass 3 instead of Gorilla Glass 5. It kind of looks like the LG V30 with this horizontal camera module here. You have a flash right below it, as well as a fingerprint sensor that's pretty easy to reach. So this is HTC's liquid surface design. Basically, it's different layers of colors in different layers of glass. And what it does is it shines a little differently in the light, but it's a little different with this translucent blue color because you can actually see some of the internals of the phone. And it actually looks very pleasant. Uh, I don't really like these lines that are here at the bottom right below the HTC logo, but still, I think the overall appearance of this phone is very eye-catching and is very unique. I think it looks gorgeous. Over on the front, it's a six inch screen. There are two front facing cameras and the bezels aren't as slim as you would expect on a modern day smartphone, but they are slim, slimmer than the HTC U11 and uh, they look pretty contemporary. There's a USB type C port on the bottom. This is a stereo speaker that also works in tandem with the one over at the top. There's not much else uh, over, uh, over around the phone. There's no headphone jack, but these over here are sort of the highlight of the phone. This is the digital buttons. Basically, they're not mechanical buttons. So you have the power button that's textured and two volume rocker buttons right here. So they don't go down like a traditional button would. It's kind of like the home button on the iPhone. Basically, when you press it, it works. There's a little haptic button that gives you uh, feedback, but it's purely digital. There's no actual movement happening. These are solid buttons and HTC said that they kept them sticking out so that it'd still be easy to find. But basically, you know, they work as intended as normal buttons. Uh, this, you press this is for the volume down and you can also turn on do not disturb mode. This turns on the volume up. It does require a little bit more pressure than I feel uh, mechanical buttons wouldn't sometimes. And there's currently no way to change the sensitivity for these buttons. Digital buttons make this a little different from other phones. But at the same time, it's probably the phone's biggest fault. We say that because using this phone day to day, this is how I traditionally hold my phone when I'm, say, reading an article. What I found that happens is that the sensitivity varies greatly. So sometimes I could just be using this phone, nothing really happens. All of a sudden, though, the phone might think I'm putting a little too much pressure on this power button, and then all of a sudden it just goes black. Of course, it's kind of hard to demonstrate right now, but it has happened almost consistently every hour that I've used this phone, whether it's the volume rocker suddenly turns down and I automatically turn on do not disturb mode, or I accidentally increase the volume, or you know the power button makes the screen turn off. It's something that just happens and the HTC does know about it and has addressed the issue, and hopefully that means that they'll produce a fix through so a software update later on that lets you adjust that sensitivity or just fixes it in general. That's the biggest issue that I think we have with this phone because for $850, it's really hard to justify having this kind of a broken user experience when you're just trying to say, use the phone and suddenly these visual disturbances just keep interrupting you. The spotlight feature on the HTC U12 is something we've seen before on the HTC U11. It's called Edge Sense, and basically that means there are sensors along the edges of the bottom half of the phone that lets you squeeze the phone to perform different actions. For example, you can do a short squeeze, and I have it set to bring down my notification drawer, or you can do a long squeeze, and that I have set to open up the camera app. You can dive into the settings, go to Edge Sense, and you can customize exactly what you want to open. For example, you can set it to even launch Google Assistant, Alexa, turn the flashlight on or off. One of our issues with it is oftentimes when you're say reading an article in Chrome or something else, we often find these visual disturbances popping up while we read. It can be quite annoying because sometimes we might not be squeezing the phone too much, yet it still happens. The good thing is you can always hide visual feedback in the settings. There's also a new action on the HTC U12. It's called double tap actions that basically let you double tap the side of the phone 
for an extra third action. This one is set on default to launch one-handed mode. And that actually works with both sides. And of course, again, you can choose to set something else with that action as well. Another extra feature is holding gesture. Basically, it detects that you're holding the phone in this manner, so it keeps everything in this portrait mode. So for example, if I lie down right now and kept the whole holding the phone in this way, it's not gonna auto-rotate or switch things into landscape mode. And that's pretty handy, but it does run into some issues frequently. For example, say if I'm reading an article and I wanted to uh, not switch into landscape mode, but I'm, say, lying down, for example. Ideally, this is what happens. Phone detects I'm working in this order, and it's not gonna switch. And what happens when I switch away? It of course immediately switched. So it's pretty neat. At the same time, what I've noticed in day-to-day -day use is that I never really, uh, when I do switch to landscape mode, I don't do it for that long time and I don't switch the way I hold the phone. So for example, if I'm quickly looking at a photo, for example, and I quickly wanna show someone, I might do that. And oftentimes I found this to be very annoying because then it forces me to change the way I hold the phone just to quickly show something. So I actually don't think it's that useful of a feature for me, but the good thing is HTC lets you turn it off completely and that's what I did. The HTC U12 Plus has a six inch super LCD display. It's a 2880 by 1440 pixel resolution. And as you can see, it's colorful, vibrant and sharp. I think our major complaint is that we don't think it gets bright enough, especially because it's a little tough to see outdoors. But at the same time, uh, I think most people will be very happy with this display. The viewing angles aren't as great as say a Samsung phone, and you're not gonna see those same levels of black as you would on an OLED display. But again, this is a very satisfactory screen. It's powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 845 processor with six gig of RAM. Moving throughout the operating system is fluid. Apps open quickly. In general, we haven't seen any issues with performance here. Even running games like PUBG Mobile or Retro Highway perform without a hitch. HTC's Android 8.0 Oreo is pretty similar to stock Android in most respects. There are, of course, some parts of it that HTC has changed to suit its own style, Sense UI. That's things like this. And of course, there's Blink Feed. We haven't really ever found the need to browse Blink Feed, so thankfully, there is an option to turn it off. And there's a lot of things you can tweak and oftentimes we find ourselves just turning off a lot of features that HTC has built in. So if something that's like a clean, minimal software is your style, this interface might be need some finer tweaking from you. We've also hidden a lot of HTC apps because we just don't think they're that pretty to use. Uh, oftentimes we're not sure why HTC didn't just go with standard Google apps. For example, we've installed Android Messages, but HTC came with its own default messages, which looks Fine, just not really that great. Things like the HTC Clock app, for example, is also not really that good looking. If you don't mind it, that's totally up to you, but I found myself just wanting to install the base Google apps that you find on other Android phones, which in my opinion looks a lot better. There's also bloatware like the Under Armour app, which I never use, so I haven't really used it. And there's also News Republic, which particularly frustrated us because this app doesn't look that great and it just keeps giving you notifications for stories that I don't really care about. And I've even tried to disable it in the app settings, but it still seems to come through with notifications. So that's a little frustrating. HTC has boom sound enabled with this speaker right here that works in tandem with the top. And it actually sounds really good. Let's take a quick listen. You'll notice that there's a music mode here. Basically there's two modes, music mode and theater mode. You wanna make sure you're on the correct mode when you're playing because the sound tweaks a little bit. So we're currently on the right mode. It's 
So it's a little hard to get that sound across, but it definitely gets very loud. It sounds pretty good, perhaps not so much as the G7 ThinQ, which has that boombox speaker. We'll have to put the two together to compare them more, but they do sound really good and loud and definitely a step up from most speakers on smartphones. I did want to mention that it was tricky to, it's hard to get the stuff on camera, but it was tricky to sort of increase the volume. I don't know if you saw that I was having a little trouble. It wasn't really working that well, and I had to sort of just manually do it. So that's just a quick problem to reiterate those issues that we have with digital buttons. The U12 Plus's camera is actually really strong. The dual lens camera is a 12 megapixel sensor with f1.7 aperture and a 16 megapixel lens with f2.6 aperture. Photos are well detailed, if not a little overexposed generally. You get the standard suite of features such as a 2x optical zoom and a portrait mode that adds bokeh around a subject, which it also works surprisingly well, although the edges of certain objects are often a little screwed up with the blur. The front-facing camera, on the other hand, you can't really use that second camera, it's more for just depth sensing, but what it does enable is, say if I take a look at myself, I turn on this automatic, it's basically helping this portrait mode, and you can see it actually is registering the edges of my face relatively well. Let's take a look at that quick shot. You can see there's some parts over here that are blurred, like the hair that's not supposed to, but overall it's still well detailed, the shot looks pretty good, and you get that nice blur effect behind the subject. It's a pretty strong camera. Battery life on the U12 Plus is actually pretty good. It's a 3500 mAh battery, and generally around 6 or 7 p.m. we found ourselves ending with 45% remaining. That's with video watching, music streaming, uh, generally high to medium usage of the phone. There is no wireless charging, however, which we would have liked to see considering the back is made of glass. So that's the HTC U12. May have been a gorgeous day outside, but me using this phone for about two weeks has led me to crawl back inside. Yes, it has a great design, a pretty good display, pretty good camera, pretty solid battery life, but digital buttons are still kind of dumb. Digital buttons are the sole complaint that I have with this phone. It just ruins the user experience because, again, as I said before, within every single hour that I use this phone, some kind of interruption, whether the screen went off or I turned on do not disturb mode, uh, it just creates a very frustrating experience. And that coupled with the software, which is a little dull, uh, a really annoying News Republic app that is apparently impossible to uninstall, uh, all of those sort of make that user experience of this phone very frustrating. Uh, this phone starts at $800 for the 64 gig version, and it's 600 and oops, sorry, it's 850 for the 128 gig version. So uh, it's tough for us to recommend it until HTC fixes those digital buttons, maybe with some software update later on that lets you customize that sensitivity. But until then, it's uh, a pass from us.